clip from the movie The Day After Tomorrow. And in that film, surging seawater levels, giant tidal waves, and a sudden ice age were all caused by the collapse of one pivotal force, an ocean current. The current depends upon a delicate balance of salt and fresh water. We all know that. Yes, but no one has taken into account how much fresh water has been dumped into the ocean because of melting polar ice. I think we've hit a critical desalinization point. The specific ocean current they're talking about there is the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. It's massive, and it's responsible for circulating the water in the Atlantic Ocean and maintaining weather patterns. And experts, they're worried it might be weakening and that the window to act might be narrowing. Well, scientists are warning that a crucial tipping point could be reached in just two years' time. They would see the start of the collapse of the Atlantic Gulf Stream if global emissions aren't reduced. So here's a little primer on that AMOC current I mentioned and how it works. It starts at the North Pole mostly, and where you have water becoming more dense because it's becoming cooler and ice forms. And then after many centuries, um, it, it slowly resurfaces. And to close the cycle, it takes water from where it's warmer, the tropics, and brings it back to the poles. A new study says the AMOC might stop entirely by the end of the century. And while 2100 might seem like a long way off, the research says the collapse could happen in just two years from now, 2025. Though several scientists have said, you know, that's, that's highly unlikely. Even if it's not totally clear yet when this could happen, if it does, it could be bad. Okay, but skyscraper tall tsunamis and a mini ice age across North America within two days though, like, is that even accurate? Yeah, it's hyperbole. It's Hollywood. To displace this amount of water, I believe it would really take an object that is the size of a few kilometers to displace this much water. Okay, so luckily the day after tomorrow isn't exactly realistic, but experts believe the AMOC has shut down before, a long time ago. Like, we're talking 12, 13,000 years ago. And the worry is, if it's happened before, it could happen again. So what could that look like? It's highly speculative, but people believe Northern Europe will cool down a little bit. It might disrupt the rains, so we might see crop failures. The oxygen in the water might decrease, which might in turn cause great harm to ecosystems. See, the ocean currents act kind of like a global thermostat. The AMOC moves water from warmer tropical regions to cooler Arctic regions up north. And I wanna give you a visual of how it all works. So I'm gonna head outside for a little science experiment to explain that and why it's so important. Hey, so we're just outside the CBC building and we don't exactly have an ocean to work with, but we do have this. And I'm gonna use it to show you how the ocean currents circulate. And this little mini water tank here, believe it or not, is going to be the Atlantic Ocean for us. On this side, we are going to pretend that this is the Arctic. And then over here on this side, that's where our warm water is. This is the tropics. I have some ice cubes here. What I'm hoping is gonna happen here is because cold water is heavier and denser, it's going to sink to the bottom, okay? So hopefully when I drop this in, this is actually what's gonna happen. All right, so here we go. Here goes nothing. Yeah, exactly. You can see, the cold water sinking to the bottom. I'll put another one in just so we can watch. And you can see it going straight across. That is where it's gonna get warmed up by the sun. So over in the tropics, we're gonna have even warmer water coming in and it has red dye in it. So that way you can see what happens when we add the warm water. I'll put in a little bit, maybe a little more. Okay, and you can see it. I'll add an ice cube there. Yeah, and it's starting to happen. Look, the red water is starting to rise because it's warmer as the cold water moves across the tank and is really making this circular effect happen. And this process, like, believe it or not, it actually takes hundreds of years. And there are a few like pretty incredible things that are happening in this process. It's not just about moving water around. 
but you know, the water as it moves, it distributes nutrients in the ocean. So it's kind of like it's fertilizing it. Phosphorus, the nitrogen, they, they feed plankton, which then goes on to feed other sea life, and that goes all the way up the food chain. So without these nutrients circulating, you could potentially see ecosystems start to break down. And an important thing here, cold water actually holds more gas. So it soaks up the CO2 and it really captures it and takes it down into deep waters, which is really important because it's keeping it out of the atmosphere. And we know that that adds to global warming. Part of the reason why we're starting to see this process slow down in the first place. And another thing that's really important about this process is that it really regulates temperature. So it keeps the weather from becoming too severe. But this process of circulation, it's getting weaker and we could potentially see it stop entirely. What is clear is that if we melt a lot of ice, um, especially from Greenland, we will release a lot of fresh water into the upper um, ocean uh, of the North Atlantic. It could collapse, uh, it could just stop the circulation. Ice melting in Greenland is a major factor in all of this. The Greenland ice sheet is the largest ice mass in the Northern Hemisphere, and scientists have been expressing alarm at the rapid rate of its melt. The CO2 emissions that we produce as humans, like deforestation and burning fossil fuels, they're major contributors to that melt. Nothing in the history of Earth has emitted so much CO2 as we have in the past decades in so, such a short amount of time. And like we heard in that clip from the movie earlier, The current depends upon a delicate balance of salt and fresh water. So if we think back to our experiment with the cold water, when we add more fresh water, it slows the cold salt water from sinking because it's lighter. So when that water doesn't sink, our conveyor belt, the AMOC, slows down and eventually stops working. When you look at uh, what's going on with uh, food affordability around the world, climate actually impacts food affordability every single day. Yeah, the change in climate has a significant effect on what you pay for food. Severe weather, flooding, droughts, it's all putting pressure on farms across North America. Cattle farmers, for example, are thinning their herds in near record numbers because of years of unrelenting dry weather. And now it's catching up to us as consumers and that's why the meat counter is becoming, but becoming more expensive. And many crops have taken a beating too. Wheat and canola, which we grow a lot of in Canada, are susceptible. Canola can be sensitive to its environment. It needs moisture to grow, but not too much water or it'll die. You have to put a lot of money in the ground to increase yields. And if yields aren't there due to mother nature's wrath, that becomes problematic for farmers. So it gets more expensive to grow these crops, right? And the severe weather that's predicted if AMOC collapses, it's likely going to cost us all a lot more just to eat. But as I mentioned earlier, we're not at this point yet. In, in this worst case scenario, um, reckless teenager uh, humanity, we could potentially collapse the AMOC before 2100. That's the worst case scenario, without any action. There is work underway at the international level. The 2015 Paris Agreement and climate accords that have followed are working on a solution to decrease CO2 emissions. One of which is to limit the global temperature increase to one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. But we know from a recent World Meteorological Organization report that there is a two in three chance we'll cross that threshold. As for the AMOC, research shows it is likely to keep on slowing down. And although 2100 seems like a long way off, the science suggests we need more intervention now. If you cross a tipping point, you cannot come back easily. Um, it's, it's really like falling off a cliff. You can climb back up the cliff, but it will be a lot longer than falling from the cliff. 